Oh, am I glad to be back? This network ain't gonna frustrate me. Okay, um, so I hope you watched the video, and if you did, um, share your thoughts. Uh, a father trying to talk with his son. We're talking about the future, you know, a time that is yet to come. And that was a father trying to talk to his son, and um, he couldn't have a straight conversation because they were discussing on two different levels. What was normal to the father wasn't normal to the son. So um, the son was asking if you rather he was asking, talking about sex, and the son was talking about multiple partners. Um, and he was saying when the sex is when the penis is going to the vagina, and then um, the son was like, "What if there are two men <laughs> or two two women?" Now all these are just bringing the reality of the future that we're going into. Um, I did a little research and I found that that there are thirty gender types. Um, you may want to just Google them. Where's the list? There are thirty thirty gender types. Or rather, 31. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, please indicate if you can. There are 31 gender types. When most of us watching this were born, we only knew that there was a man and there was a woman. Male, female. Probably I'll share the document somewhere so you could also read uh, through. We ha now have by gender, cross dresser, drag queen, drag king, feminine queen, FTM, FTX, gender bender, transsexual, trans person, there's woman, man, there's two spirit, there's third sex, there's gender fluid. There's just so many crazy things there. Okay, 31 uh, sexual orientation or um, you would say gender. Okay, so how do we live in a world where we have 31 gender types? Okay, where uh, I want you also to do something, please. Google what the world will look like in 2050. Because I think many of us are too busy living in today, hustling for today, that we forget that our life um, doesn't just circulate around activities for today. If our activities for today is just to consume time, consume resources, then we are already irrelevant in the future. So one of the things we need to do, yes, 31. Wendy, 31 gender types. Go Google it up, okay? If all we're doing is for the now, we're not thinking about tomorrow. While we are here, people are creating tomorrow. You remember the movie Back to the Future? That movie, if you also Google or go uh, through YouTube, you realize that a lot of things in that movie are already being created. Now we are watching movies like iRobot and all that. In the near future, things will be created that don't exist. Things we never believed. You know, my, if my grandfather wakes up today and sees us calling with the cell phone and watching people on the phone and doing all this talking to people around the world i believe he'll get a heart attack and die because according to him that's witchcraft but this technology what technology has done so please go google go google what the world would be like go google go google what the world would be like in 2030 and let me see you post it up here let's discuss please share what your thoughts are um what the world would be oh big sis uh louis welcome on but to me i i see you um google it what the world would be like in 2030 2040 2050 people are already creating the future we are too worried with the present and that's why we're having challenges with our children we're having challenges with our children because we are worried about the present when we think about the future we think about our responsibilities as parents which is to nurture and to bring forth then we won't stress ourselves uh, as much as we do now. So, very a, a little things. Please, if you, share, if you find anything, please share. I would like to read what you're finding. One of the things I know will happen, yeah, what the world will look like in 2050. One of the things I know that will happen is that robots are going to take over. <laughs> you know, <laughs> robots will be real. Um, we're already seeing robotics uh, taking over. We see the Android guy who read the news in China. Uh, we see what's is it? That's the other one, Sophia. You know, we've seen her, and we've seen all those things being test run right now. In the near future, they're gonna be real. Robots will be walking. Have you seen this movie, The Surrogates, by Bruce Willis? Please go watch it. And there's also a new movie. Oh, I forgot the name of the movie. Uh, Ken Reeves just acted the movie. Oh, you should watch that movie. It's going to point you a bit in the future. You need those to see this thing, so you need to shock your reality now, okay? Because if all you're thinking life is, is all your energies, all you're fighting, and all you're struggling with, you're living in the past. 
there is a life being created that you're oblivious of. And you need to wake yourself to that reality. And I think that's one of the first things you need to do about parenting yourself, uh, parenting the future. Wake yourself to the reality. Know that your experience so far is fundamental for growth, but it's also the reality of the past, not the future. Okay, so um, already, I think by 2030, Dubai said um, about 80% uh, of how many percent of your cars are going to be driverless. We're going to be seeing more. Even Nigeria, there was a driverless car once in Lagos, and people were all around it because it looked like witchcraft. That's how we explain <laughs> things we don't understand in Africa. It's all witchcraft, okay? So Google it and watch it. 20, um, 2030, 2040, 2050. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. What will the world look like? In 20. 50 there's a projection that we can now print houses so uh most of this construction we do all we need is a big 3d printer that will print a house for us and to be strong we can live in it we don't need to go through the stress of hiring labor so in the future there will be almost no jobs for those people who are lazy those people who will not develop themselves there will be no jobs um 2050 uh, jobs will be available for those people who have skills that go that language technology okay now in 2050 there'll be growth of something called platonic parenting or pa platonic partnered parenting <coughs> excuse me now that concept is very strange to many of you but um people wouldn't want to marry but want to have children and then they'll see people they like and say oh you're good uh, you look um even gay couples um, see a lady and say, you look good, biologically, uh, <laughs> lady by biological, whatever, okay, and say, you look good and I need you to, uh, and this has happened, uh, what I'm saying has happened, it was re reported on BBC, I wanted to um, 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 birth a child for me, so they take the semen of the guy, um, throw IVF, get it into the woman, she carries pregnancy, and this uh, lady, whatever her name is, and you started with an N, now give birth to a twin for a gay couple, and she's co-parenting with a the couple. They stay away from each other, but they have children they're raising. That is the part of the future. So are we ready for this shock? What will be the orientation of children in this future? Okay, those are things that happen. While we try to, you know, limit our children with the limitation of our own experiences, I would want just to remind us here that children are not your property. They are your responsibility. I'll say this again. Children are not your property. They are your responsibility. You only arrived here early enough to have experience so that you can help mentor them to have their, not just to have, but to create their own experiences. So as parents, you know, if you have to nurture to bring forth because you have experience, you came on time and it's a responsibility. Your work is not necessarily to construct a child into the image you see, because most times you see, um, uh, based on your challenges, what has happened and not what will probably happen. Question I'll ask you all. How many of you can say you are more intelligent than your child? How many of you can say that? Whatever answer you give now, record it. And in five years' time, check your answer and see if it's as valid as it is, especially if you said you are more intelligent than your child. Nowadays, I have, I have, I have a five-year and a six-year-old son, and when they pick my phone, they can disarm it, no matter how my lines are that I draw. How did they do that? Those are the future. And um, future parenting, we have to note that our kids will be smarter than we are. So I'm going to give you... A few tips because I said this was not going long, um, and probably I can rec um, respond to, to answers in the comments uh, section later on. How do you parent the future? Seeing all these. Just to me. Oh, no, 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 network. Please, network. If you still can see me, let me know because it's all gone frozen here.
Lord of mercy. I don't know if you can see Simeo. Oh. What is happening? Who stole my network? Please bring it back. Okay, I may have to just end this and continue again. Oof. Oh, you can still see me. Okay, good. Um, I'm just saying <coughs> thank you, uh, Kene RG and Tinya. Um, it's just showing me here, connecting, connecting. So I will just talk and hoping that um, we're still together in this. Someone is surprised of uh, when I said platonic uh, partner parenting. There's going to be a lot more. Trust me. A lot more that's going to shock, shock the life out of you. Okay. Um. So, so this is... I am thinking, okay, we are here. Oh, awesome. We can hear you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good. Okay, good. So I'll just continue. So, um, yeah, welcome to reality. Things are changing. One of the things we need to know is, like I said earlier, uh, we can't correct what we don't create. We can't control what we, can, we don't create. If all we do is consume the created, then they will control us, okay? So um, assignment to every parent, what are you creating? Now, creators are influencers, not dictators. Most of us are dictators. And because we're dictators, what we do is we use all our energy to want to discipline the child. The child has to do this and do that. Yeah, as a dictator, that's all you. And you are limiting them because of your experiences. Your fears are valid, yes. I would not say they are not. Your fears are valid, okay? Your concern, your care as a parent is valid. Your responsibility to draw the lines, um, to control the environment is needed. It's important. But while you do that, there's one thing I will beg you to please do. Uh, should that be my number one point? Um, yes. Number one. I think it was Dima who was talking about. D Dima made a statement. I wrote that down somewhere. Dima, where's that your statement? She said something and she said, um, yes. No matter how much you invest in, spend with, or provide for your children, if your life does not have a meaning, parenting cannot give you fulfillment, okay? Um, what I'm going to pull from that simply is that the first thing you need to do is work on yourself, okay? The child is not much a problem to you as you are a problem to the child. You are trying to use your own program to write a child, your own analog program to write a digital child, uh, to write the code on a digital child. Yes, that's what you're trying to do. So what you do is you end up frustrating the child. Now imagine going to school and at this time, you want to learn coding, you're being taught Fortran. Trust me, Fortran will frustrate the hell out of you. Okay? So that's what many of us are doing. So the first thing we need to do is have an open mind. Open our mind to new experiences. <clears throat> we need to learn every day. Learn from our kids. Not just expect our kids to learn. We need to learn from them because they are the future. They are going to control. They are going to do a lot of things I do now. And my father looks at me and he's like, oh, wow. He doesn't have the energy. But I look to my father because he has experience. I'm, I'm going to come to that later. But we need to learn from our children. We need not just to learn. Uh, I, I don't know who talked about understanding your child's pattern. Was that still Dima? Uh, not just learning, and uh, not just knowing your child pattern. That is very important. We also need to learn how it fits in for them in life. We also need to learn how um, it helps their purpose, whatever their purpose is. And life. We need to learn also from them how to parent them when we have no clue as well. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to do. We need to learn. Learn every day. Learn with your kids. Um, one day I was talking to teenagers in Lagos and I started talking about how the Super Eagles or uh, Flying Eagles then of Nigeria won the um, 
Olympic 1996, and they were all like, hey, don't you guys know? You know, 1980 Olympics, we won the gold medal. And they're like, Uncle, we don't know. And I was like, George, 1996. And he hits me. This was 2019. This was about 23 years after. They were not born. They're teenagers. So they had no clue. I had to go to YouTube to look for the video, and I played it for them. And they're like, what? And guess what? We kept our conversation going, and I started talking about um, some music. And they looked at me. Uncle, that's old school. I had no clue of what, who is singing what now, because I don't know what they're singing, but I just know they're making some good bits. And they started taking me through. And that's when I realized that, hey, guy, you're just in your early 40s, but you're way old school. <laughs> so I started learning from them. So one of the things you can do is to learn from your kids. Like the video uh, we watched earlier, the guy has learned so many. See, while your child is under you, the truth is he's also under the influence of a lot of people, the society, the internet that is bombarding him with information here and there. You can Google all sorts and get all sorts. Um, he's also being programmed by his environment, his society at large. Okay, so we need to learn from them as well. That's one way to prevent the future. Another way to prevent the future is to um, create an atmosphere for growth. <coughs> um, growth here may be relative to some people. But I think growth is one thing, getting better, improving, being larger, bigger, better. So creating an environment for growth. If you have a plant, what do you need for the plant to grow? You need what? Water. You need light. You need a good soil. And probably some other um, manure or what's it called? Fertilizers and all that, that will enhance the growth. So you want to ask yourself, my action towards my child is it the sun he needs to make him get the energy he desires? Is it the water that refreshes and renews or rejuvenates him? Is it the soil that makes him feel welcome, stable, and home? What environment am I creating? So the environment, you must consciously create the environment for growth. If your child does not feel he's growing um, where you are, the truth is he will always see another environment where he will feel he's growing. And sadly, it will be environments that lack your values. Um, one way to know that your environment is one that grows is, and it's, it's, uh, the first thing I said is that you are learning too. Okay. So I call my son and I tell my son to teach me certain things. And he does it down with love. And then my son started talking about dinosaurs and he was calling names of dinosaurs. I have never, ever heard. You know what I told him to do? To make a presentation of all the dinosaurs in the world. And he did it when I went to Google. I was like, oh boy, oh boy, TJ, you're the student here. <laughs> you had to learn. So I'm interested in the things he's learning every day. And he's interested in dinosaurs. I'm interested in some techie stuff. He's only interested in playing with techie stuff, but he's really interested in dinosaurs. Will that be a pointer that he will be, uh, what do you call them? People, zoologists or something? I don't know, but he's interested in animals. And I'm watching him learning from him. Okay, because I just love to play with pets. I love pets. Okay, good. Number three thing. We uh, must learn to maximize and engage technology. Maximize, <coughs> excuse me, and engage technology. We can't run away. There are a lot of us who have myopic mindsets about technology. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to point this. And many of you would not like what I'm saying. going to say next, especially if you have the same faith as I am. I'm a Christian. But those of you who cry about carrying the, the, the paper Bible inside of the digital Bible, you're living in the past. I'm so sorry to say, but you're living in the past, okay? We need to learn to maximize it. The future is not going to stand and wait for your belief because you believe something. The future is going to create a belief system of its own because it's creating something, okay? So why should I burden myself with so much? I agree that we need backup, manual backup and all that. I agree to all that. I write on paper. I also write um, on, my, on, my, on my digital notepad. And trust me, it's easier on my digital notepad because I don't need to type it again. All I need to do is just edit it. And one way, I remember when I was doing my uh, project in school, when I was uh, finishing my final year, <coughs> excuse me, all my classmates went writing. Then you would have to write your, your project on, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, full cap sheets. And you go to your project supervisor and just pray he's not pissed that day and he will cancel it and you have to go rewrite. I told myself, I ain't ready for that. 
and I just took my lap, my, my system then was my desktop, <laughs> my 128 MB RAM, or no, 256 MB RAM. Uh, how many gig hard disk? Was it up to a gig? No, 500 MB hard disk, 4X speed, um, uh, CD writer, you know, 14 inch monitor, you know, I was dope, man. I was the baddest guy around. Go carry that now and call yourself dope. <laughs> but anyway, but I did my project and I just went to his office. I gave him the soft copy on a what is it? Flash disk. I don't know how many of you still remember flash disk. And I gave him on a flash disk. There was no or rather on a uh disk diskettes. That's what it was called. No flash drives then. <coughs> and then he was like, Whoa, this is makes it easy. He could just read and edit himself and send back to me. And then he told everybody to, you know, please go do like TJ. And it saved him a lot of stress. And it saved people a lot of stress. So things are going to improve. Are you maximizing technology or running away from it? What are your child? I think Atima talked a bit about, she talked a lot, talked a bit about um, knowing what it's in your child um, wardrobe, something. You know, how can you not be online where your child, your children are? How can you not have a Facebook account, a social, uh, a Snapchat account, even if it's dormant? Just go and see how it works. Let them teach you. Let them do all the uh, fuzzy thing with the, the whatever it is, you know, enjoy it. Now, not just enjoy, see how to help them understand how they can use it. See how to uh, teach them how they can be profitable with it and maximize their time with it, get involved. And just imagine um, your son now start building websites or doing stuff that's productive and he sees that, do you think he would engage himself in just chatting and wasting his or her time online? Um, no apps and recommend apps. Don't just give your children, you know, the gadgets. Know them, try different apps and introduce them to your children. There's a website I would encourage you to check out. Um, it's called commonsensemedia.com. Okay, I, I love what they're doing with commonsensemedia.com. They can help you feel, they, they have filtered a lot of uh, sites and apps that are good for parents. Um, so we want to check that out, commonsensemedia.com. I'm not doing advertising, but I'm just sharing this because it's helpful and uh, go through some of their reviews and recommendations for many of you who don't know what to do. Okay, so that you can also lead your child, make your child know what is, what is. So learn to maximize. Now, in future, there's something that's also going to happen it's called telepathy. There's a lot of um, work done where you will be able to read what people are feeling and all that, implanting chips here and there. You know, one of the things that's going to happen in the future, and this will shock you, <coughs> excuse me, is that we'll have more transhuman than humans. Yeah. We're worrying about transgender. That's the list of it. Transhumans. And who are transhumans? Transhumans are people who have fixed. I had an accident. I lost my arm, and then I have uh, the opportunity to get a metal arm, and we see all that. Rem remember, uh, what's his name? Pisiros, or that guy that runs, you know, Paralympians. They have the fix this stuff on their leg, and now they can compete in the Olympics. You can fix this thing and get a robot hand, and it's working. Doesn't it sound cool? Very cool. Someone has an, assist, uh, 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 an accident and the legs are chopped off. You can now have robotic legs and it's going to function. Now, look at the interesting part of this. If I have an iron hand, I have an iron leg feast and all that, and I'm in a place where I'm being attacked, I can defend because I may feel stronger. And there are lots of explanations or, or we can add to all this. So we're going to have people who are more transhuman than human beings in the future. Watch the new movie by Ken Reeves. I've not watched it. I saw the preview and it blew my mind. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe now you can have hands that can shoot and all that. It's going to look cool. You want to build, you want to carry stuff and it's too heavy. You have such uh, hydraulic pumping hands. No need to go to the gym. Just go and press whatever button. Um, you know, you watch all those movies and you see all the stuff. So that's the reality. Okay. Uh, so there's going to be telepathy. Okay. So. There are already apps that can help you control or connect, know how your child is feeling, know uh, what your child is, what your child is, which there's someone I think called his internet nanny and all that, know what, where your child is going, what he's doing, and you know you can connect and all that. So um, maximize and engage the use of technology. Don't run, don't run away from it. Okay, ending up right now, uh, two more, three more things. One of the things you need to do, future parenting, is right now or later, uh, then if you be a parent later, if you're watching this now, and you're going to be a parent, is teach resilience and patience. There, I believe there is no programming that can teach you that because even robots won't have 
emotions. They'll only be logical. Resilience. How do you get back up when you fall down? How do you get back up when you're rejected? How do you go through the challenges that face you and, you, uh, and maintain your sanity? Now, in this, research has shown that there are a lot of trauma and mental, uh, mental illness in this time than before, and it's increasing. Why? Because the human mind is bombarded in a state of hopelessness or state of struggle or state of whatever state it is, you know, with um, uh, information, with things left and right, with uh, suppositions and all that. And the mind is not strong enough to handle what is coming to it what happens it goes down and that's what there's a lot of that coming if we don't start teaching resilience or patience and these values we're going to lose the future another thing you need to do is for a uh, parent in the future is leave passion compassionately leave your life with compassion um a lot in this i'm only picking compassion or basically start to role model the life that you want your kids to emulate. Be their biggest fan, okay? Be their biggest fan. I think about my dad. I started writing officially uh, many years ago, but officially three years ago, I started um, Win Again Today on Facebook. And for the past three years, I've been writing possibly every day until I made it Friday, when Mondays to Friday. And I would write stories and... <coughs> A lot of people read my stories, they, they, they love them. And someone was asking me, how did you start? How did you? And it just struck me. I remember my dad always told a story. My dad was an engineer, a hunter, so many things in one. And he, when he comes back, he tells of, of how he shot a crocodile in the river, how he, how he, you know, and our imaginations were always excited, where, you know, I think that's what helped my creativity, and that's what made me lose my hair. Okay, and my elder brother as well, who became creative and not uh, very early as a teenager, I was making money. Uh, he, he inspired me as well. So my father was always saying, "No stories here, stories there." Now I tell stories through my through my write-ups, and he never really taught me how to write stories. He influenced it. He role modeled it, although he may not have known exactly what he's doing. And a lot more. My father was someone who can give and give himself. Go to church, he gives. Any person who help, he gives. For the past seven years, I've been running, um, in a little of my page, I think it's uh, uh, Step Up or Imagine It MR on Facebook here. And you see some pictures. For the past seven years, I've been feeding communities. About a thousand people every year. You know, my father never said, to give, you must do this, you must do that. You know, I just imbibed it from him because he was doing it in front of me more often and then he will take us out he'll take us offshore we'll go eat uh, chicken or turkey and we'll see rice coming out from the turkey and all those interesting things and my father has this menu that nobody knows how to prepare but him that he calls us colombia or do do whatever that is only my dad in this world can make it and certainly i'm going to have one that only me can make and i know my son is going to be tripped by that hopefully he will be tripped because uh, my dad did it uh so, in, in such a wonderful way also my dad never i never saw my dad beating my mom you know you see all this fist so i don't know how to beat a woman i don't know how to you know and he just Pass down, he role modeled it. So you want to live a life of compassion. Because when we don't have compassion, then we can help ourselves grow. Um, there's more chaos, there's more um enmity, inhumanity, and all those things, you know. But right, so that. So don't thank you guys, thank you guys. I'm just hoping you guys are really here. Thank you. Um, and in ending now, I'll say don't seek to control, seek to influence. Don't seek to control, seek to influence. How can you influence? We've talked about earlier on. You can influence by creating. So create. Don't condemn. Don't criticize. Create. People will always follow those who create. Want to be an uh, influencer? Create something. What are you creating, dear parents? That's your biggest assignment from this uh, session. Create something. And I'm going to read uh, my ending notes. And I wrote, those that embrace change will, I, will enter a new age of prosperity. They will create a future. Those that cannot embrace change will stumble. 
they will create hostile environments with fighting on ending uh, and fight on ending battles and this will reduce them to the rough of stagnation uh, so once again my name is Jonathan J I have been mentoring teenagers for 21 years now and I just moved into helping parents raise teenagers and if you okay yeah yes I said I just helped I, I, I'm I moved into uh, uh, parenting to help parents help uh, help parent raise um, teenagers who um, are relevant and who are leading in the future and I'll be running a program in September okay so watch out I'll be announcing it very soon i have my mentors training program so if you if you want to work with teenagers you're talking to the right guy here okay um uh, walk you through a bit of my experience for over 21 years i believe we'll build stuff and uh whew, that is how many minutes let me see if i can read some comments creators and influencers oh yeah yeah oh god a lot of comments coming robots taking over the world yes wendy we are having chill challenges with our children because we are worried about the present, not the future. Yes, yes, yes. And we're worried about the present because we're thinking about the past. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> Platonic parenting. Uh, yes, parents are not your, quote me any day, parents are not your property. They're just your responsibility. Uh, sorry children i read somewhere that also said that the future in the future um uh, children are not the future they are the past that was a, a hard one a hard one because people want to live longer so they'll sustain their lives and not reproduce already already in some societies they are cr crying of overpopulation uh, and the third world nations are multiplying by the day Okay, and there's still scarcity. So you saw this movie where the lights it. We're praying all those things. We can't pray doesn't happen, but those things are already happening. And the rich are getting richer, the gap in between the rich and the poor they're getting quieter, there are almost no jobs. So you can see all those things uh 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 are coming to play. Those things are coming to play. So um if we don't if we if we don't if we don't start to move from where we are now in our minds, we'll wake up and realize that we're living in the past. Uh, children are not your property; they are your okay. Good, yes, okay, okay. Those are who those who could see me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Louis Zebro. Thank you, Wendy. Bukola Bukis. We cannot control what we didn't create. Exactly, exactly, exactly um have an open mind to new experience we must learn from our children yes while your child is under you he's also under the influence of his environment that large oh okay yes create an atmosphere of growth yes thank you wendy for capturing his thoughts telepathy will become the future yeah yes transhuman i said that oh yes that's in my transhuman <laughs> um in, okay internet now you can google that up uh, robot not get resilience. They are programmed to on and off. Yes. Um, oh yes. Um, I think we'll have other time where we'll teach other things. And I love it better when I'm like, talking to real people. <laughs> but I'm trying to adopt adapt to this. Oh yeah, relating to people is fun. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, it's in my. You need to meet my dad. Don't worry. Twenty-one years, my sister. It's good, yeah. Yeah. So that wrap it up. I'll come back here um, to respond to questions. See if they are. You can chat me up. Uh, my own personal um, account. If there's anything, and prepare for September. September, October, we'll be doing some interesting things and you don't want to miss it out. So it's me signing out. I want to say thank you for hosting me. I love you guys. I love you too. I love to see you uh, as a future parent because I'll be there as well waiting for you.
and the session. Oh.